Okay, the next speaker will be Slavica Dozic. Uh, he will say something about the artificial intelligence in the aviation industry, a new prediction approach for airlines. This is part one. Uh, we go then to part two and then we take questions. Okay, good afternoon everyone and thank you for coming. Manuel, thank you for introducing me and giving me opportunity to participate in this very nice sim event. So uh, I'm coming from the University of Belgrade, Faculty of Transport and Traffic Engineering, and I'm currently associate professor. And the topic, um, the title of my presentation, as Manuel mentioned, is Artificial Intelligence in the Aviation Industry, a New Prediction Approach for Airlines. And um, my presentation actually will be a sort of um, summary of what we have already heard here and the kind of introduction for my colleague. So. Uh, I will start, start for the beginning from some definition and after that I will tell something about uh, AI in aviation focusing on possibility to use AI in the airlines and finally I will narrow down the topic to fly delay and data and at the end I will mention some possible approaches. So let's start uh, what is actually uh, artificial intelligence. If we search for this term, we can find very different uh, definition and I chose uh, EASA's definition, which says that it is uh, any technology that appears to emulate uh, the perf um, performance of a human. Also, it says that is technology that can, for a given uh, set of uh, human-defined objective, generate output such as content, different predictions, recommendations, or decision influencing the environments they interact with. On the other hand, we have IBM definition which says that um, artificial intelligence is technology that enables computers and machines to simulate human intelligence and problem solving capabilities. Um, as a field of computer science, AI involves machine learning and also deep learning. This technique uh, involved the development of AI algorithms. Uh, oh no. Sorry. This one, no. Oh. This is the one that can match with the different things. Yeah. 
That's cool, right? Change the blue to also change the red. No, no, blue. To be. No, no, you can use red. Wait, I just want. I would like to see full screen because I cannot see. Yeah, the, the full screen is normally it's only on the. Um, Oh, ouais, mais ça c'est bon. Yuri, this one. Yeah. This one. This one. This one. Scotch. I don't know what to do. <laughs> Let's try. Should we go? May I continue? Thank you. 
So we know what it is, is, is some kind of a connection or a connector which is uh, not working well. So we have to wait another two minutes so they will replace it. Here we go. <laughs> we can continue. As I have already said, uh, machine learning and deep learning, these techniques involve the development of AI algorithms that can um, be modeled after the decision-making process of the human brain. And this uh, algorithm can learn from available data as we have already seen on previous presentation. Um, as I have mentioned, uh, EASA's definition, I will refer also to their document, AI Roadmap, uh, which identified three levels of um, classification of AI applica application. Uh, the first level is of uh, AI is assistance to human, the second one is human AI teaming, and the third one is uh, automated, um, advanced auto automation, sorry. Uh, each of these levels is further divided into sub-levels, therefore we have uh, level 1A, which is human augmentation, which means that um, AI system just uh, provide additional information without any suggestion to end users. Um, level 1B is human cognitive assistance in decision and action selection, which means that provide information and help making a decision or selecting an action. The second level, uh, I mean level 2A, is um, a human uh, and AI-based system cooperation, which means that, uh, that uh, AI-based system works for human to help them to make decision. And level 2B uh, is human and AI-based system collaboration, which means that they work together to make the final decision. The third level, uh, and their sub-level 3A and 3B has not been implemented yet because they require some um, system changes and additional infrastructure. And the level 3A is AI-based system which makes decision and performs action, but with some kind of supervision by a human which is uh, make, and it is possible to change the final decision uh, only if it is needed. Uh, the level 3B uh, is um, uh, AI-based system which, make, uh, which makes non-supervised decision and uh, perform non-supervised actions. Actually, there is no end users, it's only machine. Uh, further regarding the AI uh, roadmap of EASA, they uh, also divided um, AI techniques and approaches in three categories. The first one is um, machine learning, which is also known as uh, uh, data-driven, and it is used for regression and clustering problems. We have also logic and knowledge-based uh, approaches, which are used in some expert system. And finally, we have these hybrid AI systems, which are uh, actually combination of previous two. Uh, as a subset of machine learning, uh, we all know and there is a deep learning uh, which works uh, with um, different kind of uh, neural networks. And uh, what we mentioned at the end of my presentation and my uh, colleague is an example of uh, expert system uh, with application of uh, fuzzy logic and also um, decision tree usage for um, uh, delay prediction. Um, Bearing in mind uh, that uh, air traffic demand uh, is constantly increasing, we have also some environmental standards, new standards, 
um, increased complexity in the system, it is evident that AI could offer some new possibilities and also some solutions for problems that appears and that could appear. So uh, AI uh, will influence and currently is influencing uh, the whole air traffic systems. So uh, these are some domains of influence of AI. It's for sure aircraft design and um, operations, aircraft production and maintenance, environment, ATM as we have already see, uh, seen, air tra uh, aerodromes, um, then uh, innovative air mobility, cybersecurity and safety risk management. Uh, but also it is important to see application of AI per stakeholders in aviation. So in air traffic management, uh, we can uh, find in literature different examples of application of AI such as uh, conflict prediction, automatic speech recognition, flow management and so on. For manufacturers, it is also uh, evident that they can also use uh, AI in producing um, aircraft. It's in product designing, uh, better fuel efficiency, effective supply chain management, uh, training and practice. Uh, regarding airports, there are a lot of examples uh, and we should mention that uh, AI can be used in both air side and land side for different processes, for increased security or for predicting different operations, for improving uh, performances and some metrics and so on. In airlines, it is also, there are also so many examples. In each process in airlines which requires some mathematical models, we can apply different techniques of machine learning and AI, and we can use it for disruption management, predicting user uh, behavior, um, passenger segmentation, um, crew management, fleet and uh, operation management, passenger mode choice, flight delay prediction, and these are some, only some of examples. I'm sure that we will find another ones in, in the future. And uh, what is important, uh, application in AI provides for sure only um, improvement of, of whole system and improvement on s of some uh, overall performances. Um, so we are coming to fly delays. Uh, we heard a lot about fly delays. Um, this is um, a problem, uh, world spread problem in Europe and also all over the Europe and uh, increasing air traffic leads to additional flight delays and that costs airlines and passengers and society billions of euros per year. And we need to find uh, also uh, because of these uh, delays, uh, we can notice that uh, fuel consumption is increasing and that, that produce more emissions, which is not in accordance with new standards and environmental protection. Uh, so to be able to predict delay, we need data. Data are, let's say, some kind of gold in these days, but it is also important that this data can be reusable. To be reusable, we need some standards. Therefore, um, IATA has developed a standardized format for the transmission of delay information and delay codes, and uh, all mm, stakeholders in aviation use the IATA delay coding system to have a um, uh, unique database and to be able to use this data for predicting delays. Uh, so uh, as I have already mentioned, increasing demand for air travel actually require additional airport or additional capacity in the ATM. Uh, if we enlarge our infrastructure, we will also produce uh, more pollution and we will increase noise. So we need to search for uh, alternative um, approaches to reduce this delay and that could be use uh, application of AI in order to predict uh, these uh, uh, delays. Uh, we can predict flight delays using different approaches or different techniques. Sometimes uh, it depends on data we have. Sometimes the data impose the technique uh, which could be used. And what I want to uh, just to uh, mention and to show the idea which are currently we are working on is uh, uh, using application of fuzzy logic system to predict flight delays. Uh, because I have 
little time for, for talk. I will skip this slide uh, where I'm explaining uh, how fuzzy logic works. So I can show you just this idea, uh, what are we trying to do? We are currently playing with the data, trying to find appropriate input and output vectors to be able to adequately predict the duration of delays. So uh, for now, we, as I said, this is very early beginning phase and uh, this is just an idea and possibility how to apply uh, fuzzy logic to uh, apply delay prediction. So we use these three input uh, data sets. It's um, transfer number of transfer, transfer passengers on flight, uh, daytime when flight is performed, and also severity of uh, the delay caused. And we are trying to apply some different type of fuzzy um, uh, inter inference systems to predict duration of these delays. But uh, we faced some, let's say, problem which can be also, it, it can be said that it, it is limitation of fuzzy logic system because sometimes you have uh, the same input which produce different outputs and that cause um, opposing, uh, conflicting rules in our uh, fuzzy logic, uh, fuzzy rule base, and that can be a problem by, uh, during uh, our prediction. So in short, when, I fin when we finish this model and when we uh, have some result, we will come here again and present you uh, something more specific. Now it's only idea and I would like to give floor to my colleague she had some results with another approach. Thank you for your attention. working it's not actually changing at this point it's cool I mean <laughs> we have everything here but it's not changing anymore here so maybe we need another technician see here Thank you and uh, good afternoon everyone and thank you for staying so late <laughs> and uh, thank you for the organizers that call us to be participants for this very great uh, event. Uh, so as we already have heard today, uh, the artificial intelligence and machine learning techniques are very important in aviation industry and in the following slides I will just show you a few results uh, regarding the problems that we were uh, called with. So, uh, one of the most uh, uh, areas uh, where uh, the machine learning techniques are um, very often applied is the flight prediction, uh, uh, predicting the flight delays, and they prove to be very effective in this area. Uh, they are, uh, allow us to use our historical data to identify the patterns and to uh, see what are the most, uh, uh, the most often reasons that are contributing to these flight delays. Uh, this was the reason why we were motivated to build some models that will um, predict whether the flight will be delayed or not and uh, to identify some uh, reasons which were behind those delays. Um, in airline industry, uh, there are many causes of the delays and uh, here is the, we listed the, some of the, the ones that are most often, but this list is not uh, limited. Uh, but what is more important is that each of these reasons can happen in any point of time during the airline operations. 
Uh, what would, uh, what uh, would I like to point out also is that in airline industry, we are making a distinction between primary and the reactionary delays. The primary delay is the one that are related to the initial flight. And this can be caused by any kind of reason, for example, severe weather condition or some technical problems in the aircraft or something similar. Uh, while the reactionary delays are the ones that are caused by late arrival of the crew or aircraft or the passengers, etc. And this is the main reason why the following flight will be also delayed. So uh, I didn't know at the beginning uh, uh, what is your background, but I learned that you're all more or less experienced with the decision tree, so I will just uh, skip this slide, how the decision tree is working and uh, go straight to the model. Um, we wanted to build the model uh, regarding uh, uh, predicting the flight delays at the Zurich airport, and we had uh, these uh, traffic recordings from this airport. Uh, it was the traffic data from the summer seasons in the period from 2013 to 2017, and after the cleaning data, we finished with uh, slightly more than 21,000 of the arriving flights, and also we have this uh, uh, different uh, a uh, different uh, uh, group of the departing flights. But today I will just be focused on the arriving flight model. So uh, for each flight in our, uh, in, our, uh, now, uh, in our observations, we had very detailed data about uh, the flight from uh, operating airline to uh, departure and arriving time, uh, aircraft type, number of passengers, connecting passengers, uh, if the flight was delayed, what were the main reasons uh, uh, stored uh, through these IATA codes and etc. Uh, but uh, for the sake of simplicity, uh, we needed to narrow down a list of the variables and uh, here are only the variables that we used in our model uh, to build it. So this is the first model uh, of decision tree uh, that predicts uh, whether the flight will be delayed or not. Um, so uh, first uh, to say something about the model performances, uh, its accuracy is not so big. It's only 70, uh, close to 68% of the prediction accuracy. But uh, with some other uh, modifications, uh, I am guessing that we will reach uh, this uh, golden 70% that is acceptable in the industry. Uh, but uh, even that, uh, with this low accuracy, we learned something uh, from this model. For example, the most important uh, feature of the model was whether the flight was from Schengen country or not. And if the flight was from Schengen country, uh, especially during the operated during the evening period, uh, with more than 200 passengers aboard, that flight would be probably delayed. <coughs> On the other hand, if the flight is coming uh, out of Europe uh, during the morning period, that flight would be certainly on time. Uh, the other model uh, was um, uh, the model that uh, predicts what is the main reason uh, for the <coughs> flight delay. Uh, and before I enlarge the picture, I just want to explain you uh, those colors, what they are uh, indicating. Uh, the uh, orange color indicates that the flight will be uh, delayed due to the reactionary delay. Uh, the green color uh, indicates that the flight will uh, is delayed uh, due to the ATM or airport authorities. And the violet co color indicates uh, that the flight will be delayed due to the some airline internal risks. So what we found out, uh, if the flight is operated during the morning, uh, that flight will be probably uh, delayed uh, because of the ATM or airport authority, especially if it's um, operated by the Swiss airline. Uh, later during the day, uh, if the flight is coming from Europe uh, during the evening period in the peak hour, that, that flight will be uh, delayed due to the reactionary risks. Of course, there is more interpretation, but I, I guess I don't have <laughs> enough time for this. This is just a, a brief, uh, some brief of the results. Uh, the other area uh, where we applied uh, machine learning technique was in uh, marking segmentation. 
and um, where we wanted to learn how air passengers are making the decision what type of transport they will use when they are reaching the air. Uh, for this kind of uh, research, we needed so many different variables, especially the one which are related to uh, transport characteristics, uh, such as access time, cost, uh, frequency, and etc. Also, we needed the data regarding uh, the passengers and their profile in order to identify the how they, uh, what is the profile and uh, how they are uh, making their decision. So, uh, for this reason, we conducted one survey within the European market. Uh, and um, uh, regarding the results, uh, we noticed that we, got, uh, we had the respondents mostly from Italy, Spain, Greece, and Serbia. And uh, we decided to build four different models for each of those markets. Uh, here are the selected independent variables, uh, the variables that we used in our model. Uh, we have uh, the variables from this uh, socioeconomic, uh, relating to socioeconomic characteristics, also the variables related to travel uh, characteristics, but also we included some factors that we found that can be very important for passengers when they are making this decision what they will, how they will travel uh, to the airport, such as reliability, security, travel time, and other uh, reasons. Uh, on this slide, uh, I would just like to point out uh, here uh, the confusion matrix that shows you the performances of the model. So we have this uh, accuracy from varying from 56% up to the 87%. Uh, but let's go to the models. Uh, this is the first uh, decision tree from the Italian market, uh, where we learned that uh, the for Italian people, Italian people, uh, they are. Uh, for them, it is very important how they are familiar with the city, and the one that are very familiar with the city, they would probably use car or taxi to reach the airport. Uh, if they are not so famili familiar with the city, uh, especially the one aged between 36 uh, years and 54, they would use public transport. In Spain, uh, the three purpose was uh, the main splitting criteria, and people traveling for business, uh, they will probably use a car or taxi, while the one, uh, while the leisure passengers, uh, the one with high income and who do not like crowdedness on the road would use public transport. In Greece, uh, we learned that uh, people under the age of 20 uh, who do not like the crowdedness on the road would certainly use public transport, and also the one uh, who are not time sensitive would also use public transport. And finally, the model from Serbia, uh, the most probable transport choice uh, for reaching the airport would be a car or taxi, and this is not so uh, unexpected, uh, unexpected because uh, we have very low uh, level of service of public transport connecting the airport and the city, but we still identified some groups of people who are still willing to use the public transport even in those circumstances, and those are uh, over the age of 60, uh, the cost-sensitive one, and the one who are familiar with the city. And uh, just to conclude, uh, based on our experience regarding uh, machine learning techniques, uh, especially for the first uh, type of model, uh, we can say that uh, the predicting flight delays uh, in, uh, requests so many different variables, and this makes uh, very complex models. And we found that uh, machine learning techniques are very good in coping with this complexity, even when you are uh, adding more variables into this kind of system. And which is what is maybe more important, it is, it is that those kind of techniques, uh, they are not considering uh, the relationship between variables as linear, like uh, we can say uh, common uh, models, they are treating them as nonlinear, which is much more closer to the reality. Uh, regarding the market research problems, these techniques are also very uh, usable, uh, especially because they are allows you to use so many different variables, to change those variables, to make different options, and to choose the 
best approach that will suit uh, suits your passenger needs on that market. So this is uh, what I prepare for today, and <laughs> I will finish it. Thank you very much. So let's go to Kunde. Uh, thank you for the presentation. Uh, two welcome. questions from my side. Did you try any regarding the use case of the Zurich Airport delays? Did you, did you try any feature engineering? So you've mentioned that, for example, the, um, at the end of the day you had more delays than at the beginning of the day. That let's say if the flights were from Schengen, uh, they were more likely to be delayed. Did you try, let's say, to figure out if the rotational delay, which is the biggest cause of the the delays? Maybe you could count the amount, for example, of the legs for a given aircraft during the rotation, because again, it's a cumulative thing. If you start having a rotational delay, you are very likely to keep it through the rotation. Okay. So that's one thing. And the second, what would you give sort of based on this research? What would be your sort of business insights for the Zurich airport guys, what they could improve based on this research? Yes, we consider, uh, but um, you know, when we got all the data, uh, the main problem was where to start. And um, uh, we, uh, this is, uh, you know, maybe third or second uh, or fourth model. We, um, we also had one model for the winter season because uh, there you have totally different causes uh, uh, by comparing with the s uh, summer season. And this was our initial results uh, and as I said this is just a, a beginning of our research our plan is to go uh, deep now into more reasons and to isolate each of those uh, 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 we can say group of uh, delays and to try to see in each of those groups what is w uh, what is most common uh, for them and to try to go more into the detail uh, how to predict all those data. But once uh, one of those, uh, uh, co your comments are also uh, valuable. But uh, what is the problem with this airport rotation is because we only have the data for Zurich Airport. So I don't know if it's possible to identify the whole rotation, even I if it's Swiss airline, because it has uh, more flights and uh, bases uh, outside of Zurich. So, so you've got like a, if I can just add maybe you've got OAG plans and you've got flight radar 24 data that you can yeah. use thi for Only this and yes. uh, this is easy, uh, relatively easy uh, because uh, this is already pre-processed. Yes, but uh, we, uh, in those data we have the trans number of transfer passengers, uh, number of passengers on board. I don't know if we can find those uh, variables into flight radar because they are only the scheduled data. Uh, also, we don't we don't have these uh, reasons for the delay, which is uh, the most uh, important for us in this kind of problem. And uh, regarding the second question, uh, that was our motivation to try to identify the bottlenecks at the uh, Zurich airport and uh, to suggest them where to put their focus and to try to resolve it. Yes, we identified some regarding the ground handling agents and uh, so on, uh, but uh, on those pre preliminary results, uh, you I only show you uh, regarding the schedule and uh, airline uh, Swiss, I think, uh, uh, flight problems, but for them also, uh, it shows us where are always the problems uh, and maybe to just to try to reschedule a little bit that part of the day or maybe to move a few flights if there is always the problem on that flight, maybe to, re to move it on some other period of the time. Um, I didn't have time here, but um, you know, at Zurich Airport you have these waves of the um, uh, arriving waves and the departing waves and uh, in between you have very, very low traffic. So maybe to move some flights in these off-peak periods and to uh, try to solve the problem during the peak periods. Yeah, I guess it will. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I just. Uh, I just want to add to to your comments regarding uh, uh, ro uh, 
why we don't consider this uh, rotation. If we want to consider rota aircraft rotation, we need to change approach. We need to analyze uh, schedules of airlines. And this is another data, and we had uh, only data for Zurich Air Force to different. And it's real That's life traffic, yeah. yes. It's not the planned traffic. Maybe those aircraft are not the one that were planned to, to be uh, included in the schedule. Thanks for the two presentations. I have a question about mm, basically leveraging this three based model to to complement the city based model because the the, the power of the city logic model is the interpretability and the utility of the logic in your vision and sustainability and then you can basically use this modeling technique to to gather insights and then and get one day into production to compare yeah. them yeah, exactly, to use the, for example, this Gini factor in city importance and then basically see what matters for the problem at hand and use this insight to design a way to secure to be really knew this interpretability, explainability and, and the decision here. Please go ahead. Any other questions? If that's not the case, thank you very much.